Today we're going to be talking about The Walking Dead, Crisis on Earth X, and Godless. So stay tuned. Welcome to The Real Review, sponsored by Parametric and Lazy Ape Studios, where you get some of the latest happenings, real thoughts, and perspectives in the world of film and television. This is our Tube Talk episode. This is where we talk about all of the latest television shows and episodes of things that have come out over the last last little bit. It's so true. I'm totally screwing this up. No, that was right. What do you mean? My my stomach is like gurgling, and I keep trying to prevent the noise from getting in It is excited to be here. It is excited to be here. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) To talk about the shows that we're going to be talking about. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a ton of shows that are kind of like moving into their mid-season finales and kind of wrapping up a little bit, which has been good. We've been able to kind of stay afloat for the most part. I have at least, and there's going to be another show. <laughs> you mentioned you've been talking this, you've been watching just a little bit of this show, but I've heard some good things. It was Dark, that Netflix show, right? And I wanted to check that out at some point. So, um, but we I had... think I think I got to rewatch it with um, subtitles. Oh, okay, that's probably what I got to do. Yeah, the that... the dubs weren't doing it for me. Yeah, dubs usually don't do it for me yeah. either. So I would probably agree with that. But, yep. Um, yeah. So we had. Um, pretty major crossover event as well in the DC universe this For week. reals. And it was, most of my week was spent trying to watch Mine all those. too. That was kind of crazy. Yeah, but it was enjoy. Well, we'll yeah, get to that. We'll get yep. to that. We'll get to that. So why don't we give uh, our listeners some ways to get connected first? Do you yes, mind? let's do that. Do you want to start do with that. that, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. You... Find us, connect with us, realreviewmedia.com. You can connect to all of our social media networks from there, YouTube, uh, which is youtube.com slash the real review. Also Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at realreviewmedia. Um, and, and do that there. Find us there. Get connected. Neat, neat stuff being posted. Email us. Tell us what shows you want us to watch this next year. Um, realreviewmedia at gmail.com and bam. There you go. Bam. Yep. Add a little special something there. Bam. If, if this microphone wasn't attached to a stand, I would have dropped it. That would be bad. Yeah, that's true. It's not mine. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, microphone. No, you're fine. Just the <laughs> thought of it was like hurting me on the inside. I was like, oh no, don't, don't pretend yeah. to drop your mic. Yeah. Yeah, I was just speaking in theory. There you go. Well, then, let's get into the first show. Do let's it. Start with The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead. This show is The Walking Dead. It's literally Walking Dead right now in my mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so hard to watch a show it for is. some reason. It's gotten really depressing, not because of the events that are taking place on the show to me, but just because it feels like you can literally see with each episode it slowly die a little more to me and you can just see them like in the background with like their money bags going man give me more money yeah, give me more. i don't know what the pro- <laughs> i still can't put my finger on it like i i know i said this when we first started reviewing it mm-hmm. 7 weeks ago you know whatever yeah. that i just i don't feel invested and i can't put my finger on why yeah. i still think rick is cool like he does cool things yeah um, I will give it to the actors that are part of this. They don't feel like they've kind of phoned it in yet. They right. all still feel really connected to the project. Right. It almost feels like the writers and the showrunners are kind of tired of the story. Right. And they really need to maybe bring in some flesh, fresh, flesh, bro- flesh blood. Fresh <laughs> blood, yeah. I feel like that they're getting ready to kill off a bunch of people. They could be. I feel, okay, okay so this, we do spoilers on the tube talk. So if you're not familiar with that, tune out. But- um, for this last episode of The Walking Dead, it's a very Eugene heavy episode. Yes. He, they're setting him up to die or do something. Uh, I actually thought they were going to poison him. I actually thought that bottle of wine was going to Oh, be really? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. So I, I think he's going to die soon. Okay. He's going to, because they're, they're, you see, you're seeing him go emotionally places that you haven't seen him before, and The Walking Dead does that. Like right before they kill somebody, right. they they really spend a lot of time on that person. Yeah, so they give him like their moment. He's the gonna die. And they kill him. Yeah, he's gonna die. Um, I'm really frustrated with Tara and Daryl right now. It's so ridiculous. That whole story has just been so ridiculous to me. He's like, I got to, but I don't really. I understand that he was captured and tortured, and like they yeah. killed his friends and all that stuff. But he's like, I can't. I can't, you know, let this go. He's telling Michonne in the truck, you know, I can't let this go, but I don't understand. He's like, I, I have to do this now. I'm like, why? The pl- yeah. And both her and um, Rosita are like, just let the plan work, you yeah. know? Well, and that's what, like I said, the last episode, I was so, not this most recent, but the one before, yeah. I was so like, well, they're really just having Michonne and Rosita have this adventure so they can put them in the story. Yeah. Because literally we've seen that now with this episode, they go right back to thinking what they should have, which is, oh, well, we should just let, 
let the them plan work. let the plan work, and then they disappear. And then so it's like yeah. literally they're just like, well, we need to have them around to do something. And lo and behold, the plan gets messed up because yep. of what Daryl and uh, what's her face do, Tara. Yeah. It 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 makes uh, there's no, and this is part of the problem with the writing is the characters will just go in directions as is needed by the script. You know what I mean? So the perfect example is Rosita. The prior episode to this last one, she blows up one of the saviors with an RPG, yeah. <laughs> literally explodes the guy. I mean, yeah. that's gruesomely yeah. like ridiculous. But then the very next episode, which in the time frame of the show is like maybe an hour later yeah. at most, she's like, well, I don't want to get people killed. Like, I, right. I can't do this. I mean, innocent people might die. It's like, you just blew up a guy with an RPG. Like, you know what I mean? I understand. That, yeah. I mean, there it's was a the self-defense extremes. element to it, but- Right, but she was willing to go about that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, just the ridiculous, like, extremes of, like, well, we need, we don't want to have them actually support this idea, or Michonne just needing to go out and kill a bunch of things so then she can. It's like, where did you think this was going? Right. You knew that this was going to result in you having to do something with the saviors. It's just, they're, they're literally just putting things in place to kind of have it go somewhere to, to, to have the next thing happen, to have the next yeah. thing happen. And I think the best thing about, this most recent episode, if if anything, was a little bit of that kind of complex, deeper characterization with we kind of got. Yeah, with yeah. Eugene. I mean, it was nice to get a little bit deeper with him, mm-hmm. but I don't really care about his character at this point. Yeah, I don't you know? care either. I mean, ever since he kind of basically betrayed all of his friends. You right. Know? Um, I, I'm just, it's... I'm just the, growing more I'm increasingly frustrated. They did a good job <laughs> of breaking them down in the episode. Yeah. I just don't care about the fact that they broke them down, if right. that makes sense. Yeah. Because overall, it does feel like they're probably going to kill him at some point. And right. it just feels like at this point... Well, next week's uh, mid- mid-season finale. So Yeah, it feels like they manipulated the circumstances to allow for Negan to escape so that they can continue on with the battle between Rick and Negan. Right. Because all intents and purposes, this should have been over. I mean, even the fact that they had like the RPG weapons and the explosives and... Then they somehow like do sex fire yeah. manage to destroy them. It's like you're just setting all of this up so that way you can keep this fight and this battle going on for longer and longer. And it shows me that they probably don't have like a next step in mind. Right. They just want to keep playing out this. But who knows? We like, don't know. Yeah. Maybe they're sure. setting all this up and they've got some amazing thing. I will say that the we're heading up on the the mid season finale for Walking Dead. Yep. Next. And week. they've always known or had this pretty big mid season finale type thing yeah they always do a big mid-season so i mean who knows what we'll could potentially happen but they really need to yeah their numbers are down the season not i mean they still got a lot of people watching but their numbers are down yeah critic reviews are down this is i think going to show us whether or not this is going to be a story that can be continued to engage with right. over the next couple of years or if it needs to kind of like wrap it up wrap yeah. it up folks yeah, you know exactly. so um i don't know we'll see yeah uh for me i, I mean it's probably my lowest rated Walking Dead episode in a while. And I think it's just because I'm growing frustrated. I do like some of the stuff, like you were saying, they did some things well as far yeah. as a filmmaking or television filmmaking, yeah. uh, the, you know, process is concerned. I'd give it a 6.5. Okay. Yeah. I actually rate this a little higher. Okay. I like this episode better than I did the last one. Okay. And I thought they did a good job with the story development, and the character development. I think they did a great job breaking down Eugene. I think, the Rick stuff was a little stupid. Yeah. You know, going to the back to the trash people by himself. Yeah. And w- I, what his expectation is there for- They're weird too. That lady's weird. I don't know. Whatever. She's weird. And it, it's getting old that she constantly tries to make these deals with them that he ends up like going against or changing her mind. Right. And it, it, it's obvious that at any moment, these people could just portray Rick. There's no re- It would have right. made much more sense for him to try and befriend the women in yeah. the women village. That would have made 10 times more sense because they'd never betrayed him before. Right. So strategically, it makes very little sense because they're just sitting in the garbage heap. They're not doing anything. They don't yeah. really have many weapons to attack them at this point. So just the whole thing didn't really make any sense. It really felt like, well, we need, again, these characters to be back in the story. So um, I'm giving it a, um, a like a 78. Okay, cool. So it's kind 7. of- 7.8. Yeah, so it's kind of approaching back up into that like I gotcha. B minus range. So Yeah, I was just kind of frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to wrap up talking that. Hopefully things can get a little bit better with the mid-season finale coming up next week. Uh, we're going to move into next, the big crossover event that DC has had over the course of this week. Four uh, episodes. Yeah. Named Crisis on Earth X. So this is Supergirl, this is The Flash, this is Arrow, and this is Legends of Tomorrow. Right. And the order was Supergirl, Arrow, Flash, DC, Legends of Tomorrow. Right. Um, Which really didn't make that much of a difference. I mean, they kind of would have a couple moments of like adding a little bit more to the characters Mm -hmm. from the different shows when it was like their show. But 
overall, it was really pretty much just a hodgepodge of a bazillion different characters. Yeah. What were your your overall thoughts on this? I thought it was okay. Uh, I thought it started out. I liked. I kind of liked the first episode and and where it was going. It had some of the emotional feels to it. Um, but then it, gr- it grew increasingly tiring to me yeah. as each consecutive, you know, crossover episode played. Yeah. Um, I'll start with my likes on it. Um, I liked seeing every. I, I like seeing a lot of the chemistry of the people you don't get to see together actually be together. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, even if Wally's in it for a second and then not the rest. <laughs> that I did not get that. I texted you. I, he's I like, did not. He, I did not. He shows up in the last episode of the Flash. He shows up at the wedding and um, he helps you, a little bit. What's his name's uh, dad is even toasts to him. Wally, uh, I can't think of his name. Wait, who? What? Uh, Joe? Yeah. Yeah. Joe toasts him. He's like, well, be, you know, oh, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. my daughter yeah. and Barry are getting married and, and now I have a son. He toasts him and then he disappears and he never shows back up in the universe. It's like, was he at the coffee shop? Like, what was he doing? Yeah. He, well, he was at the the chapel when he got attacked, right? Yeah. He yeah, was yeah, at the yeah. wedding. Yep. I, I don't understand yeah. where he went. Like, what happened? I don't know. He didn't don't get knocked him. out. I didn't see him anywhere. Cisco was... came back. Yeah. I, okay. Which I don't mind. I don't really like Wally as a character. Like, as far as an actor, I don't think he's very good, but he was still there. Yeah. I th- okay, so back to the positives. I thought it was fun seeing the interactions of some of the people. I like so- seeing some of the people I haven't seen in a while. Yeah. Um, and that part is kind of I, I liked. Um, I like I like the song that they made for <laughs> the, the "Running Home to You" song that that Barry sang, like last season to Iris. It's kind of a catchy song. Oh Anyways, yeah. Yeah. That they had Supergirl sing. Anyways, yeah. uh, I still think Supergirl and the Flash are a better couple. So much better. Um anyways. so much better for each other. Yeah, they have better chemistry, even yeah. even though they're like not even better different. chemistry. They have similar life circumstances. Yeah. They're both, you know, a lot of issues because of, you know, superhero powers right. and things like that. And yeah, whatever. They get along super well with each other. They're always I mean, smiling. This, is our, this is our continual gripe yeah. with the show. If but we whatever. wrote fan fiction, yeah. <laughs> right, the two of them. Yeah. Not that we would ever do that. Iris would have died instead of HR last season. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Um uh, I I like I really like um, Iris and Cisco might be good. What they call him Harrison, right? Uh, or, yeah, or Harry? Her- Harry, Harry, Harry. Oh yeah, the bringing back of the original. Well, well no, original. this is Earth Two, Harry. I'm just. Oh. They call, what do they call him? They call him Harry. I believe. I can't Harry. remember. Anyways, Harrison. I don't remember. Anyways, because yeah. they have they they use some different iteration of his name depending on which like version. Right. He HR is. Harry Harrison. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I like him. He's always really great. Um. But that's kind of it. Like it was like okay to me. Yeah. And I, there's a lot of really frustrating things. Do you have any other positives and things that you really enjoyed? Or I thought some of the fights were pretty cool. Yeah, I, mean, I thought the, the church one was cool. Yeah, the church one was probably my yeah. favorite. But there uh, there was a couple that were neat. I mean, it was just cool to see the yeah. mixture of superheroes battling each other with their different superhero powers, mm-hmm. and it didn't feel it felt cheap, but yeah. it didn't feel like overly cheap. Right. Like you know, there was limitations of budget for some of this stuff but <laughs> there was I mean, one like in a warehouse like right before they all get caught by the yeah. cyborg thing where things were exploding nonsensically yeah it was just like <laughs> i was like boom, boom, why did that boom. just blow up there's nothing over there yeah <laughs> like, I thought you, we should go back and watch and it's just really see funny spots actually that are blowing up. yeah they, they did cool things like where they would do like and they've been like doing like giant one takes uh, you know like people yeah. like fighting and then slow-mo one around, takes and, and everything they'd come and back around yeah. and see it was cool to see yeah. that but in those moments like you'd see things happening where you could tell they're like well let's just have explosions over here because it makes this shot look cooler right. and it's you, nonsensical I, I really think what happened with this is they probably had a bunch of different units that were putting together together different action set right. pieces and shots and so the actors would kind of show up and they'd say, you do this, you do this, here's how you're blocking. Right, right. And then they would just shoot it. And I think the one takes in a way are easier for them yeah. because they don't have to get individual insert shots. Yep. They can kind of just get general action. And I think that's the other reason why the battles were so big at times because you can just jump to any random shot. You can just say, you get in a big fight and then shoot that from a bunch of mm-hmm. angles. And then you get in a big, and they can just jump and put those all together. Yeah. You don't need to have like a moving forward of the action. And that was... That was kind of the problem a bit too with the mm-hmm. action is that there was no stakes rising. Yeah. You know, the fights were just kind of like m- endless amounts of Nazi guys versus right. superheroes. <laughs> right. And it just after a while gets kind of boring because you know, I mean, the big twist was they killed off uh, the doctor guy. I forget his yeah. Name actually, um, a month or two ago, they actually announced that he's uh, going to a different show or something like that. So right. I was like expecting him to leave. How's he going to a different show? He died. No, no, a different Oh, completely like, different, different show. Series. I thought you meant a different DC show. No, no, no. I got no. you. So um, biggest gripes for me. Yeah. First off, 
there was like just pointless to me. It felt pointless, like forced relationships. Yeah. That I was like, how does this serve the story? It doesn't, I don't feel like it served the story at all. Yeah. I thought it was cool to see Wentworth Miller back again. I thought he was cool. Um, but in his interaction with uh, Mick or uh, Dominic Purcell plays the fire guy, he, I, I thought he was glow. annoying previously. Wasn't I, like glow or no, 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 no. I'm talking about just Mick. Um, the, the guy who, who's uh, like Leonard Snart's guy from way back when, not the new guy that I've, I've never seen before. Cause oh. I don't watch legends. Okay. But, um, I thought that was cool. The the prison break guys, the brothers from yeah. prison break. So anyways, um really thought they were cool uh to see them back again. Um but the there's just forced relationships and I I didn't understand why they like got put into awkward situations just for the sake of being in an awkward situation. Yeah. Um and then uh the other thing that I really am so over right now, if there's anything that Flash season 3 has made me be completely over right now is <laughs> Evil doppelgangers. I'm so tired of evil yeah. doppelgangers. Yes, I understand there's like 53 Earths or whatever, yeah. whatever. but like, okay, I don't want to see another... Like, what, <laughs> what are the odds that evil Oliver is going to have the same haircut and facial hair as a regular Oliver? You I know? know. Or yeah. the same with Supergirl or, you know, Harrison Wells, you yeah. know, or, or sorry, Eobard Thawne. Yeah. But like, I was like, ah, oh, I'm so over this. The big reveals of them being doppelgangers. I knew not, that. You knew yeah. it right you away. You knew it as soon as you saw it. It wasn't them. a surprise. Yeah, it wasn't a surprise at all. I, I agree with that. I think as well, the unmitigatedly, ridiculously large amount of um, like relational, emotional drama. Yeah. I mean, the felicity, the the whole thing with like the yeah. marriage stuff yeah. was just ridiculous. I hate, I, you know what I, I mean? Brought, like, so I've been kind of coming back a little bit on board with Felicity because she's burned me real bad in the last couple seasons of yeah. Arrow. And then she's gotten a little better, but that like, I was like, come on, Felicity. It's so <laughs> stupid. It's like, well, we'll be together, but I'm not going to marry you because that's going to- It's paper. Um, it's just a piece of paper. Just a piece of paper. Like, I, I, so like, if it's just a piece of paper, just go just, get married. Just get a piece of paper. You know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, just go get, yeah, go <laughs> Justice of the Peace, do what Barry said they were going to do. You yeah. Know? Go get, so like- so dumb. It was, so uh, that was really frustratingly stupid. And just all of the like- the tension of the, the romances yeah. and the getting along with each other was just kind of like, it all felt very- Maybe it would have felt different if I was a bigger fan of some of these other shows and watched them more. But everything in this episode, except for the way that um, the Flash kind of handled his relationship aspects, yeah, everybody else felt so manipulative and mm-hmm. over. It almost bordered on melodrama, and I feel like if you cut out like seventy five percent of that, yeah, you could have made this just a straightforward like two episode story arc that would have been much more interesting, much more straight to the point. Yeah, really just about them trying to beat these Nazis down. Mm-hmm. I just wanted it to be about them right. trying to beat these Nazis down. I didn't want to get into like the nth reasons of like why I can't emotionally attach to a person right now because right. I experienced this pain and hurt in a past relationship that is kind of moving me forward. It's right. like, I don't care for the most part. Yeah. I don't watch these shows for the emotional relational drama. I watch them for the the sci-fi action, special effects, fighting baddies, yeah. good triumphs over evil. Yeah. That sort of a thing, you know what I mean? So, and, and then it, then you were reminded, oh, this is a CW show. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, yeah. That's and then you're like, oh, that's the why. CW aspects play yeah. into that for sure. So, I overall, I I started off kind of like not so much liking it, but then kind of like you moved in. I was like, oh, hey, kind of this is cool, like some some fighting and some fun. And I thought that battled the church team. That was probably like the the peak of it. That was end of episode one. Yeah, yeah, right. That yeah. was like the peak of it. And then yeah. from there, it slowly got worse and worse and yeah. worse. And it kind of just met like a blah mode I, Yeah, I, f- I felt like it ended like blah to me. I was like, eh, okay. It should have ended really big, but instead they decided to end it with like just the people getting married in the park. And I'm right. like, why don't you just go have like a, a small but nice ceremony? Oh, you know? Like they could have done that That's inside. Like... They could have done that inside of, you know, yeah. uh, what industries, whatever, where the Star Labs? Yeah, Star Labs. You could yeah. have done that inside Star Labs where it's secure and everything yeah. like that or gone to like another another dimension. They have dimensional portals and yeah. stuff. I don't know. There was just a lot of things about it that, that left me feeling like, yeah, not necessarily the best structured plan out type thing. Um, Overall, I'm giving it a uh, 6.5. I'd probably go a little lower actually. You'd probably go like 6.2, 6.3. Okay. I yeah, got you. Not by much, but... I just really didn't end up enjoying it. It was yeah. sad. I was hoping for a little bit more out of it. Yeah, I felt that way too. Like I liked it at first and then it, I know I texted you. I was like, hey, this isn't as bad as I you thought You did, it was. yeah. <laughs> and then I was watching it and I was like, oh, no, I agree. And then I was like, wow, did Matt finish this? Yeah. This, <laughs> this is not very good yeah. right now. Yeah. So yeah, I was I, a little bummed out. But. A lot going on there. I uh, uh, This is, and we're moving on here, but I've got to say this too. 
I get so tired. I mean, I understand like Black Widow and the ability that they have, like the powers that they have is just basically they're really good fighters. You know what I mean? Like the, Black Widow, you're talking about. Like I'm, I'm talking about. Character. I'm talking about characters that exist in superhero universes where they don't necessarily have any like powers. Oh right, they don't right, have, right. Like super strength or super speed, or like some augmented body. Yeah. They literally their power is they just know how to fight really right. well. I'm really tired of those types of people standing side by side. With characters, like the Flash, yeah, like yeah. we, oh, I forget the two guys, and I, and I kind of put up with it, but they're, they're literally they have he has a hot gun, the fire gun, and the the cold gun, yeah, 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 like that's their power is that they have guns that shoot hot or cold, yeah. I mean, really, a guy could kill you because they have a limited range too. They could literally just shoot you in the head, yeah. You know, it's the same thing with the people that are really good fighters. These are Nazis with yeah. like machine guns, and it just it makes sense when it's superheroes, you know, that are like the Flash and Supergirl and. And even the arrow, in a sense, because he's got really good, you know, reaction ability and stuff he's like that. He's got tech. He's kind of like Batman, right? But like when you see, the, I forget the, the, the like the gunfighters and the two girls that literally just have bow staff skills yeah. and you know sword skills. It's like kind of unrealistic that yeah. you're fighting and you're you're succeeding and doing just as well as like you know the the right. the, the major superheroes. I'm sorry, that's beside the point. But no, that, it's all that, good. that probably helped to mark it down a little bit. Sure, you know what I mean. So anyway, uh, moving on. Um, and I would love to hear some perspective from some of our listeners out there. They might have some differing thoughts on yeah. that series. But um, we're not going to talk about this too much here. Um, this was a Netflix show that just kind of premiered over the last little bit. Um, maybe I'll say, do you want me to save this? Or should I talk a little bit about it? So Just bring it up just real quick. I'll bring up part one up and then maybe yeah. we'll do like a part two here. So it's a Netflix television show that premiered. It's a Western. It's called? Called Godless. There you go. Um, and it, it was an interesting... So it was kind of like a limited run series, if you will. Each episode lasts for about an hour long and um, very long. So very long show. Um, it yeah. start, so a brief synopsis for you here. Notorious criminal Frank Griffin, uh, played by Jeff Daniels, is, uh, and his gang of outlaws on a mission for revenge against Roy Good, played by Jack O'Connell, um, who is a son-like uh, pro- protege who betrayed him. Uh, while on the run, Roy seeks refuge with a hardened widower, Alice Fletcher, and outcast herself in a worn down isolated mining town of LaBelle, uh, New Mexico, governed mainly by women. Word reaches LaBelle that Griffin has headed their way. The town band's going to defend against the murderous gang in a lawless western frontier. So that's, that last little bit doesn't even happen to like the very, very end of like the last episode, more or less. Um, it's a Netflix show. Uh, executive producers are Steven Soderbergh and Casey Silver. It's got Jeff Daniels, Jack O'Connell, Michelle Dockery, uh, Scott McNary, uh, M- Merritt Weaver, who's Walking Dead notoriety, uh, yep. Thomas Sangster, who had one of the most comically hilarious scenes <laughs> they could have seen in, in any show. Oh, my gosh. I don't want to ruin it for people, but um, uh, Sam Waterston is in there and Tattoo Cardinal. Okay. Um, overall, I didn't know really what to expect. I'd heard really good things about the cinematography of it. Um, I checked it out because I do like Westerns sometimes. Um, they can really delve into some deeper talk yeah some for sure. deep, you know the whole aspect of you know violence and violence begets violence or you know pride cometh before the fall like right. those are like some themes that resonate with a lot of westerns and and some of those elements were definitely in here um the acting was pretty good i think the cinematography was outstanding at times really interesting really well shot and put together the story itself though really kind of lacked Interest. Okay. Um, so I'll just say, to get into a little bit. yeah, okay. it wasn't because it was a bad story, but again, same thing kind of with like the crisis on earth X completely different shows here, but it felt like this could have been done in a much shorter time period. Sure. It felt like it would have been a much better two part thing instead of a four part thing. They gave so many long winded, needless backgrounds for characters that more or less ended up just dying Right. At some point and not dying and like, oh, well, you're really connecting with them. This is horrible that they're dying. Just like offhandedly, like shot dead, random, moving on to the next (laughs) thing. Yeah. So, and there was a, yeah, there was like a scene and it it did interesting things. You know what I mean? And overall, I I think. How um, many episodes are in this season? Four. Okay. And you watch one of them? I watched all of them. Oh, you watched Actually, all of them? Actually, no, I'm sorry. Seven? Holy cow. There's a lot of episodes for this one. I don't remember off the top of my okay, head. Okay, okay. I just kind of had it on play. Um, it's a long series. Um, I believe it was like seven, seven or six or seven. Um, overall, it was engaging at moments. It would have these moments where it would be really interesting and there would be this yeah. crazy thing that would happen, this crazy fight, this crazy 
um, scenario situation. And Jeff Daniels, I would say, plays a really, really, really good bad guy in this. Oh, cool. Yeah. Like, he's an amazingly good bad guy. And I thought Roy Good was also very interesting. Okay. But other than those two characters, the rest of the characters are just kind of like, yeah. Oh, okay. Like, meh, 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 all right. So you, you did know? or did not finish the series? I, I did. You did? Yeah, Okay, so there's it. like seven episodes. You watch all seven right, hours. all seven, right? yeah. Oh, wow. I'm trying okay. to remember if it was like six or seven. It's a okay, lot of gotcha. episodes because it's really long and it just kind of all blended okay. together after a while. And I would start some episodes and then pause them and then come back and start watching again because it's so long. I yeah. couldn't just sit down and devote, you know, all the hours yeah. that I needed to it. Um, so, I don't know. As far as an actual Western goes, it's okay. Okay. Um, like rating? What I mean, I would put as it a whole? probably close to like a B minus, maybe C plus range. Probably like, I'd probably put it like an eighty one. Okay, is what I would say. So gotcha. good things there and good moments, but I really kind of wish that they would make an abridged version that kind of <laughs> takes out a lot of unnecessary plot points. I mean, you know, like half the episodes. People, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people die, yeah. and they pre- they spend a lot of time just presenting sort of needless plot trains going in needless directions, and I could list them. I don't want to spoil anything necessarily, sure. but like things end up happening at certain times. I mean, Jeff Daniels' gang of people wipes out like probably like four cities, like entirely right. wipes out like four cities over the course of the show. And they only needed to really wipe out one to get yeah. the point across. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it just kind of keeps happening, you know, and, and it felt like, and there's relational aspects of characters that you just like, why is this important? This is needless because it, it doesn't really impact the overall direction. Like, like it says here in the description that Griffin is headed their way and you know that it's all building towards that. Yeah. That Griffin is going to be coming into this town. There's going to be this huge firefight and it just takes so long to get to because you're just going into this whole story of like this newspaper guy right. and you know, this, you know, relationship that this person has with this other person and this tension of like, oh, well, you're a whore, but you're not, sorry yeah, to yeah, be yeah, rude. Yeah. But like, you know, like it's just all this stupid, like unnecessary stuff when you could have just made a much more straightforward right. thing. No, I got you. Know, the action. I so, got you. So yeah, uh, overall I'll give it like 81. Okay. Um, I guess if you're interested, kind of check it out. Sure. Do your thing. So. I got gotcha. Cool. So we'll go ahead and wrap things up here then do it. on the podcast. Uh, give you some ways to get connected again here at the end. Realviewmedia.com. Also check out our Facebook, which is facebook.com slash realviewmedia. We also have our Instagram and our Twitter, where both, which are both at realreviewmedia. And then we'd love to hear your thoughts. Your perspectives, your uh, interest or not interest in the shows that we've been talking about, uh, go ahead and email us, realreviewmedia at gmail.com. Do it. All right. Anything else, Matt? No, that's it. Okay. Well, it's been real. It's been real.